Chapter 16 Good afternoon, Walter. Is my father home? He is not, miss, but he did leave a message for you. The butler intoned importantly before pausing, leaving Rose to prompt. What is the message? Rose was near the end of her patience. He said for you to go about your regular activities, and to just leave a message here for him if you are to go out. He was unsure how long he would be, but it was quite clear that he wishes to speak with you before he leaves for Paris. Rose was deeply disappointed. Now that she had shared the information with her father, she was terribly anxious to find out what she should do next. Even if the direction was that she was to do nothing, she dearly hoped she would at least be informed about what others were going to be doing, otherwise she would not be able to rest easy. The thought of going to a ball this evening, with this all hanging over her unresolved, was not at all an appealing prospect. With a mental shrug, she reminded herself that it had been this way in Vienna as well. It seems to be the lot of lady spies, she thought wryly, which brought a smile to her face, and she was able to leave the butler in peace without badgering him for any more information. Thank you, Walter. For now I shall be in my chamber, if my father should return and want to speak with me. Later I will be going out to attend the Rotherham Ball. Very well, miss. Now sober, Rose climbed the stairs deep in thought. She wished fervently that she could summon Alex. It was such a pity their two families had fallen into such a state. Mayhap Wesley and Elizabeth were right, and they should be mourning together instead of blaming each other. Really? What did it matter if it was their son's fault that her brother was dead? Had he not paid the ultimate price by dying as well? Rose shook her head sadly at her thoughts. Even if she could convince her own heart to forgive the Renthams, she was most certain that her parents would not be swayed. It would matter not a jot that she was losing her heart to the Duke. Now, where did that thought come from? Rose asked herself, speaking aloud in her shock. What thought, miss? Mary asked, as Rose had already reached her room by this point. Rose could feel the heat rising in her cheeks as she glanced quickly at her maid. I was just thinking out loud, Mary. Never mind me. It sounds as though your thoughts were surprising even to you, miss, Mary commented. Indeed they were, Mary. But never mind about that. Do you know anything more since I left? I am sad to report that no, I don't, miss. You are the only one in this family who confides so thoroughly in me. Seems to me as though your father don't confide in anyone if he can help it, so I never expect to hear too much from him. Rose grinned. I suspect you are right in your assessment of my father. He does like to hold his own counsel. I guess he realises he is the smartest man he knows. Oh, I'm not disputing how smart he is, Miss Rose, but it does seem to me that everyone needs to bounce their ideas off someone else every now and again. That is very true indeed, Mary. Speaking of that... Have you had a chance to think much more on who you consider might be a good suitor for me? Rose was happy to change the subject. Debating her father's secretive disposition would accomplish nothing except frustration, and she really did need to get on with the main reason for coming for the season. Rose's words accomplished their purpose, as Mary squealed and did a little dance. Oh, miss, thank you for asking me. I was uncertain if it was my place to bring it up, but I surely have been thinking on it. Mary, my dear, you know we are friends. When we are alone, you need not concern yourself about whether or not it is your place to discuss any subject, I can assure you. But on second thought, it is good that you kept it to yourself. I might not have been in the right frame of mind to consider your words on another day. But right now, I need to put my mind to something, and this seems as good of a time as any to consider my matrimonial prospects. So tell me, is there anyone in particular that you think would be my perfect match? Now, before we start, I want you to know that I have given this a great deal of thought. I have known you since you were a girl, and I dearly want you to be happy. Rose impulsively threw her arms around the older girl, giving her a warm hug while they both grew misty-eyed. I know, Mary, and I truly appreciate it. There are very few people that I trust as much as I do you. Then you will pardon me for saying that I think the Duke of Renthorn will be the perfect match for you. In the blink of an eye, the warm camaraderie dissipated. Rose's blush reached her roots as she launched into speech. How could you possibly say that, Mary? She demanded heatedly, ignoring the fact that the thought had already crossed her mind more than once. 
Having someone else say it made it terrifyingly real. Hear me out, miss. I know everyone is angry about the young master's death, and you all blame the Renthams for it. But what if you're wrong? What if it wasn't my Lord Maxwell's fault? And even if it was, why does that have to condemn the rest of you to being sworn enemies for the rest of your days? You all were the best of friends for eons, before the two scallywags were off to the war. Mary paused a moment before she continued in a softer, kindly voice. And I've seen you with him, Rosie. Your face is so open and happy when you are in his grace's presence. You get along so well, and he's one of the most handsome men I've ever seen, besides being a duke. Seems to me as that would be the perfect match for you. I thought you were just as dead set against the Renthams as the rest of the household, Mary, Rose protested, without disputing the truth of Mary's words. Mary shrugged. I was, but when you asked me to think on who would be a good match for you, I tried to be as honest as I possibly could be. This is the conclusion I came to. Rose took a deep breath and held it for a couple of beats before replying. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mary. Did you by any chance come up with a second choice? Because I'm quite certain I shall not be able to follow your advice with your first suggestion. Mary smiled sadly. I figured as much, Miss Rose, so, yes, I did think of a few other options. Pausing to collect her thoughts, Mary continued. The young gentleman who came to take you riding seemed to me to be a good, solid second choice. Lord Dunbar? Rose asked in surprise. Why do you pick him for me? His servants speak highly of him, miss, which is a rarity these days. His horses appear well cared for as well. This tells me he is a kind man who does not mistreat those in his control, which, if you don't mind me saying so, is what you will be as a wife. Rose nodded soberly as she mulled over her maid's words. She had made a good choice when asking her maid to think over this subject. She obviously had a much different perspective than anyone in society, but it seemed a lot more useful than someone commenting on the cut of a gentleman's coat or the shine on his new carriage. Mary's observations actually spoke to how a girl might expect to be treated should she accept a gentleman's proposal. Rose admitted to herself that she had never thought about that before. Her main concerns had been whether or not the gentleman was a good conversationalist, while that was still a factor for her, she really ought to consider what else Mary had to say. Thank you so much for sharing your views with me, Mary, dear. Was there anyone else? I actually did not come up with a very long list, miss. I am sorry to tell you. It's surprising how few gentlemen stand very high in their servant's opinion. And, of course, I was rather picky. I wanted only those gentlemen who were known to be heavy in the pocket. I also only looked at those with titles. And I didn't want anyone too long in the two-fiver. Now Rose found something to laugh about. Why, Mary, I had no idea you were so exacting in your tastes. When it comes to you, miss, I would say no one is quite good enough. But I set myself a set of standards and I stuck to them. The only other name I could come up with was Lord Dunkirk, the Earl of Strathgoin. Really? I have not yet had the pleasure of making his lordship's acquaintance. I am impressed with how thorough you have been, Mary, although disappointed in the scanty results. I shall have to see about finagling an introduction to the Earl as soon as possible. Or you could just apply your mind to making peace with the Renthams, Mary argued. I think learning to fly would be easier, Rose answered tartly. Mayhap you ought to be a trifle less discerning in your tastes. I do appreciate your concerns for my welfare, but I should remind you that I do not currently have a title, and I'm just fine with that. I am quite convinced that being a lord does not guarantee that a man will make a good husband. No, I would have to say that I agree with you on that, but wouldn't you like to have a title to pass to your children? I heard you say that the season is a wee bit of a drudgery when you were only a baron's daughter. Tis true, Mary, I did say that, Rose sighed. I guess you are right. Well, now what shall I do? Seeing her maid's significant glance, Rose laughed. No, Mary. I do not think I can take you up on your suggestion of negotiating peace between the Smyres and the Renthams, and then setting my cap at the Duke. I do believe we are going to have to rethink the options. Just as soon as I ensure the situation with Broderick has cleared up. Feeling as though she were quite finished with this conversation, Rose strode across the room toward the wardrobe containing her newest gowns. Now, Mary, although I cannot fathom preparing for a ball while I am in such a state of mind... I think it is best if we get started. 
Mayhap a bath would help me relax and feel more the thing? Very well, miss. Mary wisely chose to hold on to her own counsel for the moment, merely turning on her heel and ringing for a footman to start bringing the water.